Yeah, I, I think it's only weird, honestly, because it's run into the weird sexual politics that dominates in the country. Right. Because if we were to talk about anorexia, which is a form of body dysphoria. Yes. All right. Or if we were to talk about, I mean, there actually is something body identity integrity disorder, right? Where people like want to lose an arm. Like we would be saying, well, the problem is in your brain. It's not in your arm. Right. Like chopping off your arm seems a little extreme. But if you want to do that, like go ahead. But if you were a kid and it's a five-year-old, you wouldn't say, oh, well, this kid's going to suffer with this their entire life. Like let's just chop off their arm now. Or let's, right. you know, let's prevent them their arm from developing. Like this is not and, – and to tell the entire society that this is a positive good is, is a whole other thing. It's one thing to try and treat people who have a disorder humanely. It's another thing to redefine the terms of – the entire civilization, as well as biology, in order to fit that. This, this is, it's valuing the subjective over the objective. Science is objective. Your feelings about who you are is subjective. You can have those feelings, but once you are trying to translate those feelings into the objective standard we all must hold by, now you're encroaching on my territory. It's not just, it's not just you doing what you want to do anymore. You're, you're telling me what I have to do, and that's a different thing. Right. Now, when people say that there's this 40% suicide rate amongst transgender people, um, one of the arguments that I've heard is it's because they're not accepted. Right. I've heard this too, yeah. Yeah, and that if they were accepted and then they felt themselves and they felt loved for their true self, then it would be just like everybody else. And but I've seen no evidence to suggest that. If, if, there's, if there is a decrease based on treatment then it's marginal at best. But you that know? dysphoria, it's, is it uniform? Like, I would like to know, like, is, like, gender dysphoria, is it a, a, in a similar percentile as uh, anorexia or what bodybuilders get or what strippers get when they get triple F tits? I, I don't know. know. I'd have, I'd have of, to like, look up, like, the anorexic suicide rate. Um, body I, I, dysphoria is a weird thing. You know, it's... it's it is. It, I've it, met it, people. There's a girl that goes to my yoga class that's uh, anorexic, and it's so disturbing. It's yeah, so it's, sad. It, oh, it's it's it's. Man, why would you say that? Now she gonna see your damn show, and she gonna she gonna feel horrible. There's a lady that goes to my yoga class, who's who, <laughs> she probably watches your show, a big fan of your show too. It's gonna be like, God damn, and you think I look horrible? You gonna you think I'm extremely uncomfortable? What in the world? That's not nice, Joe. <laughs> class that's uh, anorexic and it's so disturbing. It's yeah, so it's, sad. It, oh, it's 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 horrifying. It's horrifying. And listen, I'm not so I'm not saying that we should mistreat people, but if again, you're talking about an entire society mm -hmm. being forced to redefine basic biological terminology, right? Then, like, it, be an adult. Like, li like, live with this. I'm I'm happy yeah. to treat you with. Uh, listen, what I, I would hire a transgender person, but I'm not going to see. I'm not going to change what reality is in order to humor you. Like if you call yourself Napoleon, I'm not going to call you Napoleon. You're not Napoleon. <laughs> like this is not something I'm up for. Would you take it into consideration though? I mean, when you were looking at this, like, what if someone was really good at their job and someone else was equally good at their job but not transgender? Would you lean towards the not transgender person because you say, well, the transgender person, they're dealing with a host of psychological issues, obviously. Well, I mean, I, I think that you would have to think about, you know typical aspects of reliability, just the same way you would with any other mental disorder. If you knew somebody was was manic depressive, which is super common, and you have somebody who's equally qualified who's not manic depressive, you might think, well, that might have an effect on, on how they do their job. Yeah. So m maybe. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I haven't had enough personal experience with transgender people to know whether it would impact a secretarial job or something. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. But it's... but. Again, to pretend that, like, transgenders in the military, this seems to me like a decision that should be made by military people who right. actually have to determine how much does this impact the job. And if you already have a group of people with a 40% suicide rate who have high levels of inst higher levels of instability as a group, not individually, as a group, and you're choosing which groups to pick from to be on the front lines in small units living under severe pressure for months at a time, yeah. like, is that something that, y is that what you're going to go for? Or is that something where, like, You'd have to overcome certain presumptions in order to get there. Yeah, I tweeted uh, something that Kristen Beck wrote the other day. That actually, um, that statement actually made a whole bunch of sense to me. It it really did. Um, There's a whole bunch of things to consider, man. You you got to consider the whole pie when it comes to these things. Uh, you can't just like be I'm in support of this, so everything that they say is right. Nah, that's not how. That's not how this go. I'm against them, so everything that they say is wrong. Nah, that's not how it go either. Like, it's so many things to consider. It's so, so, so many things to consider. That was actually a good point made by Ben. In order to get there, 
Yeah, I tweeted uh, something that Kristen Beck wrote the other day, um, but when the military ban went Trump, apparently there was not a real ban. No, it's bullshit. I mean, basically Trump, Trump was trying something. to distract from the Sessions thing. Is that he, what it is? Yeah, yeah. He, t- two minutes later, he was back to tweeting about Sessions. He, the, the, <laughs> this was the part about that I didn't like. Like, I actually agree that there is a question as to whether the military should be recruiting transgender people because I think that the military has certain, like, it, it creates a bunch of questions, not just questions about who showers with whom, but also questions like, okay, you have a transgender man. Does he have to fulfill the female standards of fitness or the male standards of fitness? Right. right like, these are actual questions. Yeah. Does it, how does it work with troop cohesion? Right. Yeah. You have a group of men, and now you have a man who's technically a man, but he's, do you treat him as a woman? Like, does he have to carry the same amount of stuff as the guy? Like, how does that work exactly? Right. Uh, does this, the cost of gender transition surgery and hormones and psychologists, like, does that come into play at all here? Would you recruit from the anorexic community for the military? Mm. Like, that's, it, these are, like, real questions. But that said, that's why they commissioned a study from General Mattis at, at Department of Defense. He was going to look into all of this and then give a report in six months, and Trump just sort of tweeted it out there. I agree that I think that Trump's general... You know, his general attitude on it is probably correct in terms of what the military is there to do and what what it's not there to do. But what I don't agree with is how he did it at all, because it's disrespectful to the people in the military who are transgender. I mean, like, I wouldn't want to find out in a tweet. I would want a better rationale than two tweets. And then we're back to and then we're back to, you know, like, look, they're doing more than I. I mean, they're serving the military. I didn't serve in the military. It seems like it would be pretty hypocritical of me to say, well, it's perfectly respectful to say in two tweets, you're out. Because that's the way it is, without any sort of supporting argumentation. And he didn't actually implement a policy. He didn't give the policy to the Defense Department so they could even implement it. The Pentagon says they're not implementing it because they don't have a policy. So it's a PR thing. So this is a weird PR thing. But See, it- that's, that's the thing, too. See, I, a lot of people always in heavy sub- tr- um, support of Trump and, and how great of a president y'all believe he was. Um, how does... That happened when it comes to his level of maturity when it came to what he decided to tweet and not tweet. I'm just, I mean, putting out there the type of statements he was putting out there over and over and over again, that wasn't necessarily the most um, respectful thing to do. How does that come off as presidential? And I don't agree with the whole presidential term anyway, because I think that it should be shaken up like crazy. But how, does he just get a pass because you support him? I think that answer is yes. You will say no, probably. And I'm sure you will have your reasons for saying no. But I think the answer is yes. He gets a pass because simply you support him. And it's something like our kids. You see them do something silly and, and nobody else saw it, then you will cover it up. If you see them doing something silly and someone tried to get on them about what they did, you would defend them. It's simply because that's your team, that's your family. Um, I believe the same thing happened with Trump. Not implementing it because they don't have a policy. So it's a PR thing. So this is a weird PR thing, but it really stirred up people in the um the Which comment was, I think section. it was designed to do, right? I'm sure. Well it, either that or he just felt like tweeting. I know? think that's what I, I think that's what it was. I mean he wanted to shift the conversation. And it was it, it, the funniest thing about that is that he did it in two tweets. And the first half of the tweet was, in consultation with my generals and my military experts, we have decided that we will no longer accept ellipses, 10-minute gap, transgender people in the military. So there was, a, <laughs> there was, a, there was a, a story at BuzzFeed that was kind of funny. They went and interviewed a bunch of people in the Pentagon. And a bunch of the people in the Pentagon were like, during that 10-minute gap, I didn't know whether we were going to nuclear war or what, right? Because that first tweet was like, we will no longer no, accept. No, it could have been North Korea's, North Korea's missile, yeah. you know, missile test program. Right. So, Wow. Yeah, but it, this, again, is evidence. Of, you know, I think it's an example of even if I think the policy is good, good policy done the wrong way is actually counterproductive for the policies that I want to see done. Like, I want it laid out by Mattis. I want it laid out by Defense Department. I want all the reasons laid out so we can have a good discussion over it. I don't really want just, like, thought vomit on Twitter. That's just not—I don't think it's effective. Well, it also seems that this issue is such a hot issue, and it's also an issue that you're not really allowed to have an opinion on other than the standard opinion that this has always great. been a woman trapped yeah. in a man's body, and this is the way it is, and By the way, this, it's Descartian, totally healthy. This Descartian notion that it's like a man—that's that, like the, the, the soul in the machine, and that's the, the, there's a mm. woman in deep— down for 40 years who had three children with a man's penis and now mm. is now is escaping 
or as a Ghostbusters. Like uh, again, <laughs> as a Ghostbuster. Ghostbusters. It just as a Ghostbuster. <clears throat> Have you seen the man in England? Was it in England? No, it was Germany. Yeah, as a the man in, in, that identifies as a six-year-old girl. Yes. And so they turned him into a six-year-old girl. So and there's this clip. Pigtails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's that clip of me that's gone around the internet a fair bit, where I'm talking to a college girl about this, and she she's saying like men are men can be women and women can be men. And I said, well, how old are you? I love that clip. I mean, come on. <laughs> Why aren't you 60? Why aren't you 60? Yeah. And right. she, and she's she, like baffled, like what? And then it finally <laughs> hits her and it's like, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think this is what's kind of frightening about the age we live in is that we can't even come up with common definitions of basic things. How are we supposed to have conversations with each other if you can't decide what a man is or what a woman is or, or whether a scientific fact ought to be relevant or not? Yeah. Right? Like, like there, at least we could d- decide what was a scientific fact or not before. And now it's like the subjective has just eaten everything. If I don't think it's a scientific fact, it's no longer a scientific fact. And well, therefore, we've I no longer the accept parameters it. parameters of the argument. It's become about. Well, this is, I mean, that same in, in, a, in a separate conversation that Ben Shapiro had with a young lady. She decided she described the, the, the definition of something. I forgot what it was. Um, but when she Googled it and looked up the definition, it was opposite of what Ben Shapiro said the definition should have been. I've never exhibited phobia of trans people. I'm not afraid of trans people. Well, well transphobia is more along the but, lines of disagree, well, prejudice against the trans So I think that, I think that, you, I, I, actually, I actually think that your first characterization was right. I think that transphobia is really disagreement with the basic principle that the trans community is trying to purvey, which is... So he decided to change the definition right there on the spot. For that particular um, thing, I think it's a scientific fact. It's no longer a scientific fact, and therefore well, we've I no longer the accept it. changed the parameters of the argument. It's become about freedom—the freedom to be your authentic self freedom. versus biology. And right, and again, be 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 your authentic self. Do whatever you want. Like you know, yeah. more power to you. But it is no longer about your freedom to be your authentic self when you're talking about either legislation that impacts how I run my business or how I raise my child, or you are suggesting that it is my duty to humor your authentic self. Like, I think there are a lot of people who do stupid crap their entire lives. It's not my job to humor their authentic self. I mean, I'm, I'm pro-drug legalization, but I've never done drugs, and I think that drugs are stupid. You know, don't tell me that I have to, like, cheer when somebody smokes a joint. Like, do what you want, but don't tell me that I have to redefine what I think is good and bad behavior. First of all, Ben, if you think smoking weed is stupid, you can kiss my Because smoking weed is not stupid, Jack. I like smoking weed. Like, that's silly. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, the other thing that it became this weird political hot point where we were talking about bathrooms. Yeah. And then it became like the number one topic. Because it was easy for people to sort of boil down right. the argument into that, I think. Right, of course. Like this, what about my children? My children are going to go in the bathroom and a man with a dress is going to come in. And he's going to claim that he's uh, identifying as a woman. And it got to the point where so many people were upset about it that people were boycotting South Carolina. Remember that? Oh yeah, you know, the, and and this the one I thought was amazing was was the NCAA saying they were going to remove the Final Four from North Carolina because they passed the the bathroom bill right in North Carolina, and I I, I asked online, okay, so when are you going to abolish the separate male and female divisions of the NCAA? Like, I mean, you've said that we can't right. have separate male and female bathrooms where biological males play, and you know, where, where biological males go to one bathroom and biological females go to another. So why do you have separate divisions? Why do you have a why do you have an NCAA women's division and an NCAA men's division? Yeah, where does this go? I mean, where, eventually... Where, it, it, how does this boil down? I mean, eventually it goes to one place or another. Like, either we just say, this is a step too far, give me a break. You know, science says no. Or we say, anyone can be anything at any time. A man is a woman, and a woman is a man, and, you know, it's and just pick. Have you, you ever seen any of the videos of people that are gender fluid? Uh, I have seen those videos. Those yeah. videos are fascinating. Like they wake up one day and they're a woman, and the next day they're a man. And so, there was a guy on NPR on um, Radio Lab on the podcast who transitions at times of stress. Makes so, perfect sense to me. Like, in the middle of having a conversation, I just switched. But I'm, I'm Paul now. I'm did, a man so now. Did, like, when he's more stressed, does he switch into a woman? Because that'd be really question. sexist, right? I mean, I think that like if he was stressed at work and he switched into a woman and started crying. That seems kind of sexist to me. That's implying that women are the people who cry at work. So I mean, that is sexist. Also, this raises a bunch of other weird questions. Like, okay, if you're like, there's, there's been this, again, you want to talk about weird? There's been this, this, this weird push in parts of the trans community to suggest that a male who doesn't want to have sex with a biological male who says he's a female <laughs> is a, is now a sexist against women. Transphobe is a transphobe, right? You're yes. a bad person if you're a man who doesn't want to have sex with a man, a biological man. And it doesn't make you gay to do that, right? If you have right. sex with a biological man who says he's a woman, that's straight sex. But if you were to have sex with a biological woman who says she's a man, you're gay. 
Come on, bro. Come on, man. Okay, hopefully that's not a rule. Hopefully that's not something that's real out there because that's BS. That's BS, God damn it. If, if, if a man meets a, a woman in the club and later and, and takes her home so that they can get down to the nitty gritty and then he finds out that this woman is a man and he decides that at that point that he don't he no longer wants to be with this person romantically, then he's a transphobe. That's BS. I hope it's not that. See that right there. That right there sullies your argument. Anybody in the transgender community. That right there is BS. I, that that's BS. If you have the right to decide what you're going to be, what sex you're going to be, somebody should also have the right to decide. Whether or not they will be with you if they know who you are and um, and who you and and and, and um, what you um, and how you was naturally born, so that's not right at all. Don't don't try to. You can't victimize people or try to. You can't demonize people for having. Um, for using their own rights to decide what they want to do with their bodies and the reason why they want to do it. So you don't want anybody demonizing you. Don't demonize anyone else. That's not, that's not fair at all. And I know life is not fair. The world is not fair, blah, blah, blah. But that right there goes against what you stand for. That, that's not right at all, bro. It's not. This is a woman. That's straight sex. But if you were to have sex with a biological woman who says she's a man, you're gay. Mm. Yeah. Kind of weird. It is definitely weird, but I have seen the arguments and the the blog posts and the tweets about men who discriminate against trans women, who do not want to date trans women. And people keep saying, well, it's it's culturally defined. It's like, no, that's called evolution. (laughs) Well, you can have a baby together. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It turns out that evolution wants men to have sex with women. Like, I'm sorry to break it to to everybody, but evolution relies on human reproduction. Okay, if you put that thing in the wrong place, it ain't gonna reproduce. Like that's just sorry. I mean, like I, I don't, I don't know why I have to keep apologizing for science, and and then they say that my party is the party of non-science. Like, w- what? Like you're the <laughs> ones who say that two minutes before my baby is born, it's not a baby, and a man can be a woman. But I'm anti-science. I'm just, I'm, I'm wildly confused by this. Well, the whole thing is wildly confusing. Um, but it's just, it's such a strange Extremely subject. It's confusing. such a strange subject that's been brought to the forefront. Again, I, I think it's about more the moral posturing than it is about people who actually think this is a major issue. I think you're absolutely right, and I think people love to be virtuous. They love to be on that side. They love to virtue signal. How dare you? Yeah, how it, dare it is you? the how dare you were doing. It is. Yeah. They just sort of take testosterone and see what's up. Wow. But the, the it's just. It's a it's a weird facet of our society today that is uh, unexpected. I mean, you go back 20, 30 years, and it was an oddity. And you know, even during, during the Renee Richards thing, it was it was more of an oddity than anything. And people I think just it, sort of accepted this, it. Well, this is why I say I think that it's I think that a lot of the people who are virtue signaling are still treating it as an oddity. They just won't admit that. Right. I think that they're watching it because it's a circus to them, and I think that's actually cruel. I don't think that you should like put people who suffer from mental illness on the cover of magazines. I just don't. I, I think that that's bad strategy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. That was interesting, man. Uh, that was all kinds of interesting. That was all kinds of interesting. Why go through all that when they can just strap one on? What? If you think about it, then the vagina is an inverted penis. <laughs> I'm sure there's more gray area. Okay. Y'all are having like the best back and forth conversation and one thing i want y'all to do inside the comment section and i'm talking to the people that's live with me on twitch um i want y'all to understand that um this is is as frustrating as it is right now because all of you come from a side that you understand and you you believe in right now um look at this as an opportunity to just um to understand one another's side and not to make enemies, but to understand that we are all here for the right, for the same reason, and that's for understanding. All right? And then continue to be respectful. I really appreciate that. For you all, man, I want to hear what y'all got to say about this in the comments below. If you have yet to hit that subscribe button, 
please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. You all have been amazing. Love y'all.